The Way of Love Misplaced Love There was once a very qualified and beautiful young king named Bhartrihari who was expert in all the arts. King Bhartrihari married at the age of 25 years and he adored his beautiful newly wedded wife. Eager to please her, he presented her with a jeweled necklace the value of which would be over a million dollars by today's standards. He placed the necklace around her neck with his own hands, embraced her and said, "Most dearly beloved, this necklace is very precious. Please always keep it with you." King Bhartrihari was greatly attracted to his wife, but she had no such attraction to him. Rather, she was attracted to her husband's commander-in-chief, who was also extremely handsome. Therefore, a few days after receiving the excellent necklace, She gave it to the commander in chief desiring to please him although the queen was very attached to the commander in chief he did not feel the same way about her he was attached to a prostitute a few days after receiving the necklace he presented it to that prostitute desiring to please her the prostitute did not feel the same way about the commander in chief however for she was attached to the king one day She presented that very necklace to the king desiring to please him seeing the necklace the king became distressed and asked her from where she had gotten it frightened she did not reply the incensed king said if you do not tell me the truth i will cut off your head the prostitute then revealed the truth of the matter to the king who left her and took the necklace to the commander in chief King Bhartrihari asked his commander in chief Where did you get this If you tell me the truth I will not harm you but if you try to conceal it from me I will have your head The commander in chief revealed the truth to him and at that moment the king realized that there is no true love in this world He at once made up his mind to give up all his worldly attachments He left his palace his kingdom and his opulent attire and he became a very famous renouncer and spiritualist king bhartrihari's grief and anger arose from his affection that has turned sour this was caused by his not knowing that in order to love one must first embrace the supreme love the misery he tasted due to misunderstanding that supreme love god is common in this world some of us think that he does not exist something is formless and without qualities and something they are different divinities or gods for those of different faiths the falling reveals how anyone can become free from all suffering caused by animosity envy and quarreling by knowing that single one divine reality there is only one family all of us are in the family of one god It is not that there is one god in England another in America and still another in India the Christians Muslims and Hindus are not worshiping different gods the names Allah Brahma Jehovah Krishna and Yahweh refers to the same god called by different names according to differences in language and culture if we love the same one god why do we quarrel We quarrel because we don't know what real love is. If we have true love and affection for the one supreme Lord, we will naturally love each other. There's a saying, God is love and love is God. And in Indian Vedic culture there is a saying, all should be happy. Jesus also taught this philosophy. He went to India when he was about 16 years old and he visited many places of pilgrimage like Vrindavan Ayodhya, South India and Jagannath Puri. In Puri he saw the deities of Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra. And he heard Lord Jagannath, meaning the Lord of the universe, addressed as Krishna. In this part of India, the name Krishna is pronounced Krishna. Because of different languages, Greek and Hebrew, this name became Krosta, then Krishna, and now it is pronounced Christ. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna and now Christ 
they are the same in this universe there is only one god and he is not russian english german or spanish he knows all languages without difficulty but there is actually no need of knowing them there is only one real language in the entire world and that language is called love eyes can speak that language ears and hands can speak and understand it and a glowing face can tell everything god is one and he is the embodiment of love krishna is the original name of god even in the ancient vedas and it means the all attractive reservoir of pleasure all other names like super soul buddha allah and god are included within him unity in diversity although we are all parts and parcels of the same supreme lord we have divided up this earth declaring this is my country this is your country even though we are all individuals we all depend upon the same sun and we all breathe the same air this is the principle of unity in diversity unity refers to the fact that we are all part and parcels of the same supreme lord krishna the father of all the diversity refers to our eternal individual natures because this is the eternal reality we will only find peace and happiness in this reality unity in diversity will have no meaning if people have no faith in the supreme god or love for him and all living entities love all creatures it is often thought that humans are the only members of the god's family but this is not true he creates all creatures they are all his children so why should we not love them all the saying all should be happy does not only apply to humans the supreme lord has created cows and those cows freely and indiscriminately gave milk to all in the vedas the cow is referred to as go mata mother cow because she nourishes us with her own milk it is not stated anywhere in the bible that we may kill the cow or any animal in the original aramaic language of the bible the word brosimus has been used more than 20 times brosimus means food and it has been translated as meat in old english meat did not mean flesh it meant food but the english language has changed and today most people wrongly believe that the holy bible supports the eating of animal flesh the old testament clearly states thou shall not kill this means we should neither kill humans nor animals the quran also does not sanction the slaughtering and eating of cows the supreme lord has not created animals for us to eat for this purpose he has created fruits roots milk butter grains and vegetables he will not be happy if we harm any of his children what to speak of killing our own mother trees creepers hogs and insects are also children of one supreme lord in indian vedic culture it is said that one should not walk on the field after it has been plowed and seeds have been sown there for these seeds may die we should not give pain or suffering to any living being we are the children of the supreme lord who is the personification of supreme happiness and reservoir of supreme happiness for all others we are part and parcel of that happiness the only difference between the supreme lord and ourselves is that he is unlimited and we are minute we are qualitatively one with him but unfortunately we have forgotten who we are we should try to realize this truth we must not quarrel with those of other religious faiths the only true religion of all soul is love and that religion is one without a second we should love god and also each other and in this way people can live happily in this world love has a form the vedas explain that the supreme has a transcendental form and personal qualities and he performs extraordinary pastimes he is all attractive and the possessor of all potency he is indivisible and one without a second although he is one and although he is everything he is a person god g generator 
the generator of this world o operator the operator of this world and d destroyer the destroyer of this world he nourishes and supports the entire universe vedic sages like shila vyasadev narad muni and lord brahma have told us that he has a very beautiful form and many millions of transcendental qualities if a father has a form his son will also have a form if the father has no form or qualities the son will neither have any form nor qualities nor can he even exist it may appear that god is sometimes described as formless in certain scriptures but when such scriptures use the word formless they mean that he has no material form no material qualities and no material features his shape and features are spiritual he is all powerful and therefore he has the power to have a form if he were without form qualities power and mercy he would be nothing he, he would be unable to help us or hear our prayers what to speak of giving us eternal bliss we don't believe in a god devoid of mercy power and qualities if he were without transcendental qualities such as mercy what value and purpose would there be in worshiping him both the bible and the quran state that he has a form the bible states god created man in his own image if he has no image or form why does the bible say this his image is transcendental it is not mortal he has a spiritual body from which he created man it is also said that jesus christ is the son of god if the son has form then his father must also have form in fact he has the most beautiful form he has all good qualities and he is complete with all potencies the quran states in allah kalaka main surati hi allah or khuda has form and from that form he has fashioned man the word surati hi means form and the name allah means the greatest all universes and all creation are contained within him and there is nothing equal to allah in greatness the vedic conception of god confirms this understanding and also says that the supreme being lord krishna is both the greatest of the great and the smallest of the small the words formless without qualities and without features used in scriptures to describe god have come from the root words form qualities and features without the concept of something having form there can be no concept of something being devoid of form it must therefore be concluded that the supreme original entity has form qualities and features and one of these qualities must be mercy he is so merciful that he created this entire world to fulfill our foolish desire to enjoy separately from him without that love once a man in a forest heard the sound of a tiger as he ran in fear his eyes darted here and there looking for shelter finally he came across a blind well a well that is no longer in use grass and plants have grown over all that well and a tree grew beside it taking help from two branches of the tree the man lowered himself into the well comforted by the thought that he was beyond the tiger's reach as he descended the well however he saw beneath him many snakes the snakes raised their hoods and hissed ready to bite him as he hung from the two branches he realized that his predicament had only increased at the bottom of the well there were many poisonous snakes waiting to bite him and at the top a ferocious tiger waited to eat him he was suffering great anxiety then two rats one black and one white began gnawing the branches onto which he held it was only a question of time before the branches would be eaten through and he would fall into the pit of snakes to escape this predicament he had to either climb out and be eaten by the tiger or descend into the well and be bitten by the snakes whatever he chose to do his fate would be gruesome 
in this very dangerous situation the man suddenly noticed a honeycomb on the branch of the tree because the tree was shaking some honey was dripping and it was just happened to be dripping very close to his face taking this opportunity to enjoy he stuck out his tongue and took that honey into his mouth he began to relish the flavor thinking oh how sweet how sweet feeling some happiness he completely forgot the danger he was in all the components of this analogy represent our own condition the man in this story exemplifies all souls who are attached to this world we are in a dangerous situation as we may die at any moment and there is no way for us to be saved by our material endeavors the snakes represent our many problems coming at us one after another like waves in an ocean we think oh this is the last of my problems i will be happy as soon as this problem is solved but sometimes the next wave is larger still and sometimes many waves or problems come at once five or six at a time at the top of the well stands the tiger who represents death which is waiting for every one of us in this world the two branches represent the reactions to our fruitive activities good and bad pious and impious we live our lives experiencing the reactions of our pious and impious activities combined together these reactions comprise the duration of our life and that duration is being taken away moment by moment the black rat represent night time and the white rat day time we are very happy when another day comes and goes but actually the coming and going of days only means that the duration of our life is being gnawed away amidst so many problems and dangers one drop of honey falls on our tongues and this drop is likened to the momentary happiness we may feel with friends and relatives of this world the search for happiness all living creatures are making a great endeavor struggling to attain real everlasting happiness however as the vedas explains worldly things cannot give us happiness regardless of the position a person may hold he or she remain unfulfilled even if one is wealthy young beautiful educated famous and influential he still looks for something more to make him happy even the presidents and prime ministers of great nations remain unsatisfied throughout history it has been revealed that rich and powerful persons like napoleon and the kings and queens of england france and germany were deeply unhappy despite their seemingly advantageous position in modern times we can see this in the lives of princess diana and bill clinton to name a few the little happiness we receive in this world is momentary and mixed with suffering it is not continuous and eternal nor is it complete and pure from the lowest material planet to the highest there are so many types of misery and no real eternal happiness no soul identified with the material body can be happy this human life is meant for finding a way out of the prison of this body which is destined to grow old and die we want to be happy by satisfying our material bodies but old age very quickly overtake us and we lament the material happiness we receive is not really happiness it is condensed misery we do not understand that the soul which is different from the body and mind is spiritual eternal and full of knowledge and bliss we can therefore only be truly satisfied by that which is also spiritual eternal and full of knowledge and bliss the supreme personality of godhead and our loving relationship with him nowadays we are making many inventions and discoveries in areas such as medicine transportation and communication we can easily travel from one side of the world to the other in just a few hours by sitting in our living room we can see what is happening on the other side of the world we can watch cricket being played in australia or india and we can see the president of america speaking in the white house in washington and if a person's eyes are defective surgeons can repair them 
with parts of eyes taken from a dead body however despite these and other advances people are suffering more than ever before we are still not able to prevent old age and death and we cannot prevent war and terrorism or the spread of disease new diseases continue to appear the advances in science and technology have not brought us happiness rather we have become more fearful materialistic and greedy why is modern science failing us the reason is that it is not in fact very developed scientists cannot see the soul which has a transcendental form and they cannot even see the mind which is material we think that we are very advanced due to developments in technology but all we have done is increase the needs of the material body and neglect the needs of the soul we do not care to love the supreme lord and thus we do not have any real love and affection for each other we trust our dogs and cats more than we trust our families and friends husbands and wives do not remain together and divorce is common parents reject their children and children reject their parents almost everyone is interested only in gratifying his own body and mind person who want to control the endless chain of birth disease old age and death can learn to do so from the ancient vedic culture studying modern scientific knowledge will not help when scientific knowledge develops to a more sophisticated level people may finally be able to control old age and death but to attain this level modern society must learn from our vedic culture a perfect question the vedas tell an ancient story there was once a self realized soul named yagya valka and he served in the council of the great and celebrated king janaka he was very learned in the vedas and he is fully aware of the presence of the soul and super soul within the body yagya valka had two wives maitri and katyani once in his old age he called his two wives and said to them we have lived as householders for many years i have amassed vast amounts of gold and many cows and i have also given each of you several children i now want to divide all my property between you so that you will be happy for the rest of your lives after i have done this please permit to go to the forest to meditate deeply on the supreme personality of godhead hearing this katyani became happy and said your goal which is very wonderful is to meditate on the supreme lord you are my husband and i shall assist you in doing this maitri gave a different response she said i have a question and after you have answered it you can go with a glad heart you are going to the forest because you are not satisfied with all the gold and property you have accumulated during your life or with your wives children and friends So do you think these things will then make us happy? Yagya Valka replied, You are truly my devoted wife. By asking this question, you have greatly pleased me. The answer to this question is discussed in all the Vedas. Gold and property cannot give real happiness. Position in society, learning, reputation, friendship and family can never make one truly happy. money and whatever it may buy in this world cannot give us what we hanker for we are parts and parcels of the supreme lord and he is the reservoir of all happiness therefore we can find happiness only in him to serve him is actual happiness whereas the happiness we taste in this world is minute and also perishable lord krishna is an ocean of transcendental tasteful relationships and the embodiment of supreme happiness he alone can satisfy us so i wish to go now to the forest to attain him the path to happiness if we want to be truly happy we must engage in the practice of serving god in the vedas this process is called bhakti yoga or connecting with the supreme lord by serving him by considering his happiness first a person automatically become happy and peaceful 
he does not harm other creatures be they animals or human and as a result he can live peacefully with all devotion to god has three stages of development the stage of practice the stage of awakening spiritual ecstasy and the stage of fully blossomed ecstasy called pure love to achieve pure love we begin at the stage of practice in this age of coral and hypocrisy called kali yuga the most powerful spiritual practice and the best method to find happiness is to chant the name of the supreme lord his name is not different from him and it contain all of his potencies as well as his sweet forms and pastimes this will be realized fully at the stage of pure love chanting the holy name of god cleanses the heart of all unhealthy desires and tendencies leaving one feeling tranquil and connected to him the vedic text named kali santra upanishad states in this age of coral and hypocrisy the only means of deliverance is chanting the holy names of the lord there is no other way there is no other way there is no other way the names of the lord can be chanted as follows hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare mantra of divine love water air and practically everything is polluted these days as the oceans are polluted by poisons thus poisoning both the fish and the fish eaters material sound vibration also pollutes and poisons the atmosphere people spray poisons to kill insects thus poisoning the grains and those who eat them similarly material sound vibration in the form of abuses criticism of others quarreling and so forth and in fact any material vibration pollutes the minds senses and hearts of everyone throughout the world we can contract this pollution and pain by chanting the hare krishna maha mantra an example may be given of a big pond if you take a stone and throw it in a pond the waves that are created will touch the all edges of the pond this universe is like that pond chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare creates many waves of spiritual vibration those waves touch everything up to the end of the world moving here and there and purifying the entire universe from all pollution lord krishna is inconceivably powerful he can create the entire universe in a second and then destroy it and again he can create many worlds he has invested all his mercy power and opulence in his names and thus they are also unlimitedly powerful they very quickly travel throughout the universe as spiritual sound vibrations and the pollution gradually disappears trees creepers animals and insects cannot speak they cannot understand our language still everyone not only humans but all creatures throughout this universe will be touched by the powerful holy name whether they are aware of it or not if one touches fire knowingly or unknowingly he will feel its effects similarly these holy names will inspire and purify all living beings whether they are aware or not trees grasses and humans all become fortunate when they hear about krishna and even the creatures in the jungles are gradually liberated from suffering if we chant loudly all our senses will be purified and there will be nothing to criticize and no unhappy memories by material endeavors we cannot control the unhappy and unbeneficial thoughts that enter our minds but they are conquered very easily by chanting gradually our hearts will be cleansed by such chanting and then we will realize that our real self in trust the soul of our souls is lord krishna therefore if we serve him we and the entire world are benefited god is love and love is god chant the hare krishna maha mantra and be happy